Hi guys, my name is Sulmaz and welcome to English Story TV. Let's listen and enjoy. Saint George and the Dragon. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful kingdom where everyone lived in peace. The kingdom was so rich that the king decided to move the capital to the desert. He wanted to show that they were so powerful they could tame the hot desert sands. The capital was built with bricks of bright blue and yellow, and it had a deep well at its center. From this well flowed all the water in the city, so it became a central square with painted walls and a busy marketplace. The king was proud of his city. Nowhere else in the world could you buy such nice things see such happy children and eat such delicious food. But one day, a dragon flew down to the city. It landed in the square and opened its mouth. The people screamed and ran away, but no fire came out of the dragon's mouth. You may think, well, what is the problem then? A dragon that cannot breathe fire is no danger. This monster had something far worse than the hottest fire. He had horrible breath. His breath smelled so bad that anybody who came near it passed out and didn't wake up or even daze. So very quickly, the square became empty and the dragon lay down next to the well. O oh, king, come out and speak to me. The king was very scared, but he did as the dragon said. He held a wet towel over his face and stood very far away, but still he almost passed out from the dragon's breath. Well, what do you want, oh, powerful dragon? I can give you gold, silver, whatever you... I have no need for gold and silver, said the dragon. What I want is food, and don't give me any of that stupid rabbit food. I want meat. The king told his men to bring the dragon five sheep. They did so, and the dragon ate them up one by one. Oh, their bleats filled the city that night. The king hoped that the dragon would leave after he finished. But the next day, he simply burped and said, Another one. So each day, a sheep was brought to the dragon, and when they ran out of sheep, they brought him a cow instead. While this all happened, the king tried to solve the kingdom's problems. Because the dragon's bread went into the well, nobody could drink the water that came from it. So they had to buy water from other kingdom and transport it into the city. But when the other kingdom heard about the dragon, they no longer wanted to come there, and they charged higher prices. And soon the kingdom was running out of money too. Of course, many knights came to try and kill the dragon, but each one passed out before they could even scratch him. And the dragon happily ate them up. The king did not like this, but at least it meant that the cows lasted longer. Then one day, the king found out that they had run out of cows. There's no other option, he said. We will hold the lottery with all the people in the capital and the person chosen will go to the dragon. It was a horrible thing to do, but they had no other choice. The dragon grew angrier every day and if he wasn't fed, he might use his bread to make them all pass out and then eat all of them. Nobody could leave the city either because they couldn't afford the water to make the long journey through the desert. So each day, a lottery was held and they choose one of the people in the city to go and be eaten by the dragon. The king tried not to watch, not to listen, but he could not stop thinking about it and at night he could not sleep. One day, when the king saw which name had been chosen from the lottery, he almost threw up. It was his daughter, the princess Saria. No, said the king, I won't allow it. But the people had already heard about the result of the lottery, and they were mad. Their husbands, their wives, their children had already been chosen and fed to the dragon. Why should the king 
be allowed to say no. The princess heard about this and quickly left the city to go pray. She had cried every day since the dragon came, but today she felt strangely calm. This was the right thing to do. She thought she would show the city that they were strong. As the princess sat on the sound and prayed, a knight rode by on his horse. She thought he was coming to try and kill the dragon, so she said, "The dragon's that way," and pointed at the city. But I wouldn't try it. None of the other knights could even scratch him. I don't think anything can kill it. A dragon," said the knight, whose name was George. He sniffed. "Oh yes, I can smell it." But I wonder why you want to kill him. Dragons are terribly useful, difficult to tame, though. But they can carry heavy things, fly you. Useful? That dragon has turned our water bad in our ship, our cows, and our people. In fact, he's going to eat me today. I am sorry, George said. I did not realize this dragon was causing such problems. And it would be a shame if he ate such a beautiful girl. Let me go and deal with him. And before Saria could respond, George rode into the city. She ran after him, but waited outside the square. She could not hear much of what was happening, but it didn't sound like fighting. In fact, he was talking to the dragon. Could it be that this man was a monster? That he was working with the dragon? A few moments later, there was a loud thump, and then George walked out of the square, whistling. Said Saria hopefully. "Oh no," said George. "Like I said, that would be a waste." He's passed out, and I put a collar around his neck. When he wakes up, he'll do whatever I say. Saria couldn't believe that he was serious about taming the dragon, but she was so happy that she said, "Oh." And went to kiss the nice chick, but when she came near George, she smelled his bread, and it was awful. She passed out and landed with a thump on the ground. Oh dear," said George. George had bitten the dragon the same way the dragon had bitten the city. He had used his bad bread. Every day, George ate an onion for breakfast, garlic for lunch, and blue cheese for dinner. It was very useful for taming animals. But not so useful for his love life. George went into the square and waited for the dragon to wake up. When he did, he roared at George, but the knight said, "Uh oh, oh! Remember, I can make you pass out with one breath. See that collar around your neck? It is to make sure you're a good dragon. If you're good, I'll let you take it off." The dragon was angry, and he was about to bite George's head off. But then George opened his mouth, and the dragon smelled that mix of onion, garlic, and blue cheese. The dragon fell to the ground. Fine, you have tamed me for now. George took the dragon inside the castle and told the king what had happened. The king and his men opened all the windows, stood very far away from George and his dragon, and tried to breathe as little as possible. But still. They cried from how bad the two smelled. You know, this is a beautiful city," said George. "I think I'd like to stay here, if that's all right." "No, no," said the king. "We um, we're all too afraid of the dragon still. If its collar broke, what might happen? No, it's better that you leave. In fact, if you leave, I'll make you a saint. A saint." What do you think of that boy? George said to the dragon, who he had named Bartholomew. Hmm," said Bartholomew. George was scratching him behind the ear, which he liked very much. All right," said George. "I accept, Saint George. I like how it sounds." So the king quickly, very quickly, sainted George, and the knife left the city with his pet dragon. When the princess woke up and found out Saint George was gone, she cried. "Don't worry, my dear," said the king. "There are plenty of handsome knights for you to marry." "No, I'm not crying because I'm sad. I'm crying because I'm so happy he's gone. 
Father, he smelled worse than your feet. St. George traveled with the dragon through the desert, and finally they came to a river. Well, said George, now that I am a saint, I suppose I should baptize you. Baptize? What does that mean? Is it painful? St. George laughed and pushed the dragon into the water. There, you're baptized. The dragon growled and pulled St. George into the water. They played and fought for hours. Finally, St. George explained why baptism was important. He had given the dragon a real name, like a good Christian. Now God knows that you're called Bartholomew as well. Oh, said the dragon. Well then, you should have baptized me sooner. I went around so long with the God thinking. I then have a name. How embarrassing. When they got out of the river, the water was a much darker color than before. Further downstream, there was a village, and the people who collected water from the river that day wondered why it suddenly smelled of onions and old cheese. And so St. George saved the kingdom and found his dragon. Every day, they prayed together three times, and whenever they came to a city, People locked their doors and shut their windows. You poor thing, said St. George to Bartimolio. They're still scared of you. But really, they all saw that the dragon was just a big dog with a collar around his neck. It was St. George they were afraid of. <laughs>